Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve the 34th question from CBSC Class 10, 2023-24. Sample question paper set 2 for Mathematics Standard with subject code 041. Section D where each question is of 5 marks. Now this question has an OR question as well and both the questions are from the applications of trigonometry chapter. And we will be discussing both the questions in the same video. A man on the top of a vertical tower observes a car moving at a uniform speed coming directly towards it. If it takes 12 minutes for the angle of depression to change from 30 degree to 45 degree, how soon after this will the car reach the tower? Give your answer to the nearest minutes and consider that square root of 3 is 1.73. Now let us understand this question by using a rough figure. Now in this figure I have considered the man standing on the top of a vertical tower as point P. And imagine that the man is observing straight horizontally from top of the tower. So that is called as the line of sight that is when you look straight. And from that straight line that is line of sight he makes an angle downwards to look at a car which is moving at a uniform speed. So when you are making an angle with respect to the line of sight downwards that is called as angle of depression. And when he looks at the car at the first time, he makes an angle of 30 degree with respect to the line of sight. And the car is moving at uniform speed and it is moving towards the tower. And from position 1, it quickly moves on to position 2. And the man standing on the top of the tower looks at the car at position 2. So at that time, the angle of depression that is with respect to line of sight becomes 45 degree. And the car moves from position 1 to position 2 in 12 minutes. Now we have to find out what is the time taken by the car to reach the tower. So to proceed with further calculations, let us use an equivalent diagram in terms of triangles. So the tower is represented by the line PQ and the position 1 of the car is represented by the letter S and the position 2 of the car is R and the time taken between R and S is 12 minutes. And the line of sight I have taken it as from point P to point T. Now I have considered only the first angle of depression which is 30 degrees over here. That is when the man makes the angle of depression looking at position 1. Now the line PT that is line of sight is parallel to the line QS. And PS is acting as a transversal line cutting the parallel lines PT and QS. So we can make use of the alternating angles of the parallel lines over here. So let me highlight this. So looking at this, we can easily say that angle TPS is equal to the angle PSQ. That is the alternating angles of the parallel lines. So angle S also becomes 30 degree. Now let us consider the second angle of depression which is 45 degree. Now here let us consider the parallel lines PT and QR and PR as the transversal line cutting these two parallel lines. So let me highlight it. Now if we look at these two parallel lines, again we have an alternating angle over here. That is angle TPR is equal to angle PRQ. So this angle becomes equal to 45 degree. Now once we have done this, let us find out the distance between the points R and S since the time is given between these two points. So here we have written the time taken by the car to reach from point S to point R as 12 minutes as it was given in the question. And let us consider the speed of the car to be y meters per minutes. Now we know the relationship between the distance, speed and time. So it is given as distance is equal to speed times time. So the distance rs or sr is given as speed is y times time is 12 minutes. So it becomes distance rs equal to 12y. So let us consider this as our equation 1. Next, let us break down this given figure into two right angle triangles. That is triangle PQS and triangle PQR. So here we have the triangles PQS and triangle PQR. Now let us try to find out the tangent trigonometric ratios for both the triangles. So starting with the first triangle PQS, we can write tan of 30 degree is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So for this triangle, Opposite to the 30 degree is side PQ and adjacent is side QS since PS is the hypotenuse because it is opposite to the 90 degree. So we can write tan 30 as opposite side which is PQ 
over the adjacent side which is QS. Now tan 30 is a standard angle and its value is 1 over square root of root 3 is equal to PQ over QS. Now remember that we are trying to find out the time the car takes to reach the point Q. That is it takes the time to reach the tower. So we are considering of writing the equations in terms of QR or QS. So here we are going to cross multiply the equation. That is QS multiplies with 1 and square root of 3 multiplies with PQ. So we have QS is equal to square root of 3 times PQ. Now let us consider this as our equation 2. Now we are going to repeat the same steps for this triangle. That is tan 45 degree is equal to its opposite side is PQ. So PQ over the adjacent side is QR. Now tan 45 is also a standard angle and its value is 1. So 1 is equal to PQ over QR. Now again cross multiplying QR multiplies with 1 giving you QR equal to PQ. And let us consider this as equation 3. Next let us refer to the previous figure. Now here the distance RS is nothing but the difference between the total distance QS and the distance QR. So we can write RS as QS minus QR. Now the distance RS was 12Y from equation 1. And QS we have got it as square root of 3 times PQ from 2 and QR is PQ that is from equation 3. Now let us factorize this by taking the PQ common from both the terms. So 12Y is equal to PQ times square root of 3 from the first term remains minus 1 stays in the second term. Now taking the square root of 3 minus 1 on the other side of the equal to sign we get PQ is equal to 12y divided by square root of 3 minus 1. But from equation 3 we can see that PQ is also equal to QR. And since we are trying to find out the time taken by the car to reach the tower, we are going to replace the height of the tower with the distance that is PQ is equal to QR. So we can write here distance QR is equal to 12y over square root of 3 minus 1. Now since we are trying to find out the time we are going to make use of the relationship distance equal to speed times time again to find out the time taken by the car to reach the tower. So we write here time taken by car to reach from point R to point Q is equal to distance QR over the speed of the car. Now distance QR we have already got over here. Now speed of the car was given as uniform. So here also we are going to consider the speed of the car as Y. So let me substitute here. So distance QR is 12y over square root of 3 minus 1 divided by speed of the car we had considered as y. Now we can also write this as 12y over square root of 3 minus 1 times y becomes 1 over y. Now here we can divide the y from each other and we are left with 12 over square root of 3 minus 1. Now remember that we cannot leave a square root term in the denominator. So we are going to rationalize this denominator by multiplying the numerator by square root of 3 plus 1 that is its conjugate divided by square root of 3 plus 1. Next let us multiply the numerators together. So we get 12 times in the bracket square root of 3 plus 1 and in the denominator we can see that it is of the form a plus b times a minus b. So using the algebraic identity that is a plus b times a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. We can write here square root of 3 square minus 1 square. So here we have square root of 3 square minus 1 square. Let us further simplify this. So we have 12 times square root of 3 plus 1 and square root of 3 square gives us 3 minus 1. So this is nothing but 12 times square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 2 and 2 divides the 12 so we get 2 1 times and 2 6 times and in the question they had given us the value of square root of 3 as 1.73 so let us make use of it so 6 times 1.73 plus 1 so let us multiply them together and we get it as 16.38 minutes that is 6 multiplied with 2.73 now since in the question it was mentioned to round it to the nearest minutes, we are going to approximate this as 16 minutes. 
So this is the time taken by the car to reach to the tower. Now let us move on to the OR question. If the angle of elevation of a cloud from a point 10 meters above a lake is 30 degree and the angle of depression of its reflection in the lake is 60 degree, find the height of the cloud from the surface of the lake. Now let us try to understand the question by using a rough figure first. So in this figure we have AC acting as the surface of the lake and the point B is 10 meters above the surface of the lake and BD is acting as a line of sight. That is if point B looks straight horizontally, we call it as line of sight. And with respect to the line of sight, B makes an angle of elevation of 30 degree. Angle of elevation means the point B is looking upwards towards the cloud, which is at point E. Now from the same point, we are going to make an angle of depression. So if the point B is looking downwards with respect to the line of sight, we call it as angle of depression and here in this case it is 60 degree as given in the question. Now we have to find out the height of the cloud from the surface of the lake. That is from line AC what is the height of the cloud. Now here you can see that ACDB forms a rectangle. So if side AB is 10 meters, side CD is also going to be 10 meters. And let us consider the side DE as H meters. So the total height of the cloud from the surface of the lake is 10 plus h or h plus 10. So the reflection of the cloud in the lake made is also going to be at a depth of h plus 10. So as you can see here from the surface of the lake, the depth or the height is h plus 10. And the distance between the point B and point D is taken as x meters. Now let us break down the figure into two right angle triangles. The first one is the triangle BDE. And the second one is triangle BDF. So we have the same triangles drawn over here for easy reference. So we have the triangle BED right angled at D and triangle BDF right angled again at T. And their respective sides are being marked that is BD is X, ED is H and angle of elevation is 30 degree. And for the second triangle angle of depression is 60, BD is X and DF is H plus 20. Now let us use the tan trigonometric ratio to solve each triangle starting with the first one. So tan of 30 can be written as opposite side over the adjacent side. So opposite to angle 30 is ED which is written over here over adjacent side is BD. This is equal to ED we have it as H over BD is X. Now tan 30 is a standard angle so we know its value it's going to be 1 over square root of 3 is equal to h over x. Now cross multiplying that is x multiplies with 1 and h multiplies with square root of 3 giving us x equal to square root of 3 times h. So let us consider this as our equation 1. Now let us look at the second triangle BDF. Using the same steps we are going to use the tan trigonometric ratio for 60 degree and write it as so tan 60 equal to opposite over adjacent so opposite to 60 degree is df and adjacent is bd. Now df value is h plus 20 and bd is x as we got from the figure. Now tan 60 is again a standard angle so its value is going to be square root of 3 is equal to h plus 20 over x. Next we know from equation 1 that the value of x is square root of 3 times h. So in place of x we have substituted its value that is square root of 3 times h. Now let us multiply the square root of 3 times h on the other side of the equal to sign. So we get square root of 3 times square root of 3 times h is equal to h plus 20. Now square root 3 times square root 3 gives us 3 times h is equal to h plus 20. Now let us gather the like terms on one side of the equal to sign. So we get 3h minus h is equal to 20. So 3h minus h gives us 2h is equal to 20. So we get the value of h as 20 divided by 2 which is nothing but 10 meters. So now if we look at this figure the height of the cloud from the surface of the lake is h plus 10. Since we got the value of h as 10 so the total height is going to be 10 plus 10. So let us write here the height of the cloud from the surface of the lake is h plus 10 meters. So h is 10 so 10 plus 10 we get 20 meters. So this is the height at which the cloud is above the surface of lake. 
I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. If you know any other way of solving this example, do comment below. And if you are liking my videos, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.